Welcome to the lectures on service management principles. I am Christian Grönroos from Hanken School of Economics. The topic of this lecture is customer-driven marketing communication. The important part of this phrase is customer-driven because in the end, in the final analysis, it's the customer decides if communication works or not. However, most of marketing communication is very much marketer-driven, sender-driven, and the customer's role is traditionally very marginal. Customers are considered to take what is given, more or less. Now, the new developments with data and with digitalization enables com marketing communication to be uh, used in totally new ways that indeed are customer-driven. Let's start by looking at uh, the communication circle. Uh, it is a, a circle that uh, illustrates where communication emerges, where communication has effects, and how communication effects at one stage moves on to the following stages. You could start anywhere, and I, I'll use an, uh, an example from uh, uh, booking and staying at a hotel. Because uh, what the customer would do is perhaps start by looking at the internet and uh, looking at uh, options and reading about references and perhaps going to social media and perhaps discussing with a friend. It starts with word of mouth, references, social media. They will communicate to, the, the, to this uh, customer that there are a number of options that seem better than others. Now, at this point, uh, of course, marketing messages from this hotel would be important. And uh, if uh, the customer who now has some expectations uh, sees messages, ads, or on the internet, uh, the expectations will either be reinforced or perhaps customer will become in doubt and look forward. Now, these expectations leads to uh, booking. The customer books the hotel and stays at the hotel and it gets into interactions. Now, there are a number of service encounters emerged. And in these service encounters, interaction, so-called interactive communication uh, occurs which communicates to the customer, is this a good place? Is this not a, as good a place? How is the quality? Do I like it or not? Now then, the customer moves on with experiences. And uh, the customer uh, will then uh, share these experiences. Now at this point, marketing messages from the hotel may, one way or the other, uh, support or contradict the experiences. And all this which lead to word of mouth, that is, uh, um, communicated in various ways, again, on the internet, through social media, or peer-to-peer -peer by, by the customer. Now, finally, there is uh, the question of word of mouth. Traditionally, word of mouth is always said to be the most important marketing communication um, possibility to, to use. However, we don't know normally how to use it. Now, there's one golden rule here, impeccable interactions. No mistakes, no failures. That's the only way to manage word of mouth. So this is how the communication circle works and how uh, communication in various ways uh, influences this circle. Now, from the firm's point of view, it's important to understand that so much communicates. First of all, what the firm says will communicate. Now, there we have traditional marketing communication media, including sales, digital marketing as uh, something that's emerged during uh, recent times. Then what the firm does communicates equally much. For example, deliveries or the service process with all its uh, encounters, usefulness of products bought, behavior employees, how systems function, and also hidden services, something the firm doesn't consider services, but the customer considers services. Invoicing is a typical hidden service. How failures are handled, complaints management are typical hidden services, not considered services by the firm, but, but by the customers, and they communicate. Then finally, what others say and do, well, that's news stories, social media discussions, word of mouth, peer influence by fellow customers during interactions in service encounters, and so on and so forth. So there is a huge field of communication. 
traditionally only what the firm says is managed uh, properly. And the rest is to a large extent uh, left to, in the worst case, poor chance, uh, in the best case, marginal attention. It's important to, to really uh, take into account all sources of messages because some are more credible and other are least credible. The least credible ones are the planned messages. That is what the firm says, what the market them says. Mass communication, digital marketing, sales and so forth. Somewhat more credible are product messages. That is design of products, appearance of products, usefulness of products, understanding of what raw materials has been used and so on and so forth. More credible are service messages because customer knows that they are more difficult to, to manage. And service messages, well, they occur in interactions with service processes during uh, all the many service encounters that may take place. The most credible ones are the unplanned messages. That is social media discussions, information on websites, word of mouth in various ways, news stories, gossips, and so on and so forth. And uh, the problem is if the, the marketer manages the planned messages, but doesn't manage very well the rest of the, the messages, uh, the more credible ones are gone without enough attention. And the least credible ones, which therefore have the least effect, are uh, uh, planned very carefully, and it should be the other way around in a way. Then we must not forget absence of communication and the effect of absence of communication. That is, when the customer gets no information or, 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 or feedback, when something happens, a service failure or, or a product failure or a mistake or something, and the customer feels uh, out of control. If the firm doesn't communicate quickly and truthfully, then negative communication effects occur. Now, <clears throat> by and large, marketing communication is not very customer driven, as I said in the beginning. Now, uh, if you want to define marketing communication as customer-driven, integrated marketing communication, it would be like this. It's marketing communication which is based on customers' communication in use. And communication in use, that is, uh, com that is the effects that follows from the customer's integration and sense-making making of all messages from any source that he or she uh, are exposed to. Any source, company-driven or stemming from other sources, the customer perceives as communication, forming value for the customers for a specific purpose, to choose a product, to choose a service, or anything else. It, it kind of looks like this. A lot of messages from various sources, planned product, service, unplanned, come in. And the customer's process messaging uh, process is like this, trying to make sense of all these messages, find out what really is communication of importance to me, I understand it and it seems important, and what is then the value of this communication in use for my specific, specific person, right, purpose right now, uh, perhaps for making a purchase or choosing among different uh, alternatives uh, or uh, any other uh, similar situation. Now, it's important to go into this customer-driven marketing communication because this is what creates effects. Now, the next question is, of course, um, what does the customer's communicative context look like? Well, it's like this. The customer is there and there's a temporal dimension that influences the customer. Past experiences from uh, using a service or using a product or from uh, the firm, the organization, their production processes, anything. And there are in the future expectations, expectations for the future. Will they have uh, spare parts that may, I may be needing in the future? Will they be there for me in the future? Will they handle my account in the future? Or are there uh, perhaps problems that will emerge? Now, then there also is a situational dimension influencing the customer's uh, uh, sense-making process. Uh, 
there are external factors influencing the customer. What are competitors saying? What's the government saying? What are the norms in the society saying? Uh, a whole host of that types of external factors that influences the customer's decision-making process when he or she is trying to make sense of the communication messages he or she is exposed to. And then there are internal factors, attitudes, prepositions, personal thoughts about the future, and so on and so forth. And all this, all this influence the customer's decision, does this message make sense? Which messages become communication in use and are of some value for my decision about buying a specific service or product? Adding the customer's sense-making process to his or her communicative uh, context, uh, the model looks like this. Now, influenced by the two types of temporal effects and the two types of external effects, the customer will uh, start to, in his or her mind, integrate all the various types of messages from various sources that are coming in and trying to make sense of them. And then this, the outcome is, a picture of what of this is useful, that is communication in use. And this is used for decision making. The customer sees that theirs is, and the customer's individual value of all the communication coming in, that uh, then is used for uh, making the decision. Now, there's another aspect of marketing communication I finally would like to talk about. And, and, and that is, uh, the medium and long-term effects of uh, a communication campaign or, or uh, one communication effort uh, of any type that uh, seldom really are taken into account. We talk about long-term effects of advertising, for example, or other communication effects, but, but this is something a little bit different. And that is, how does a communication uh, effort influence current customers, potential customers, and the employees? We must remember that the employees very often is the most eager audience of any uh, communicative efforts of a firm. So they must not be forgotten. Now, there are communication efforts in the short term. In the medium term, when a customer experiences interactions, how is the service process functioning? How useful is the product? Uh, and so forth, the effect changes. In the longer term, when this goes on and a customer gets more and more experiences of various sorts, the image is developing and an information formation effect occurs. Now, let's first look at current customers. A communication <clears throat> effect in the short term, the effect of a campaign, may be uh, very positive. A customer, when a new current customer will say maybe they really mean it, even though they may have negative experiences. And if they have positive experience, good. But let's see if, if, if the experience is not good, if the communication, for example, overpromises, then the effect is either, or perhaps it's better now, or maybe not. In the longer term, when the customers realize uh, it was just overpromising, the effect will be negative. I should I know better, I was cheated. And in the longer effect, there will be a negative image formation effect. Customers will say they never do what they promised to do or something to that effect. Now, potential customers in the short term will see the, 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 the promise and doesn't know, he or she doesn't know it's overpromising. So they will say, this sounds good. Now, in the longer term, the effect will be, uh, yeah, I wonder when the customer's experience is uh, something that doesn't uh, meet up with the promise. Or the effect will be negative. This is not what I expected. In the longer term, it will have a negative effect on the image well, if this is uh, going on. The customer will think they just talk and promise. And employees, well, they will be skeptical from the beginning because they know how it is. So they will say, I doubt this promise. And in the longer term, they will say, oh no, again, I have to explain and tell customers who are angry that it doesn't work and it's not my fault. And I'm not allowed to say it's not my fault. A negative effect. And in the longer term, employees are going to start thinking about finding a new job. So we do have to be careful with any, any com communication effort that we plan and, and, and implement, because the effects may be surprising in the longer term. 
and on other target groups than we thought of in the beginning. Now, the theme of the next lecture is uh, managing service development and branding. Thank you.